appreciate it. So I give her a Rodriguez Thanks for uh, having me tonight. Uh, I guess uh, it's been a little bit while since I've been on the microphone, but okay, we'll uh, see how it goes. I'm used to presenting. I've got a background in power electronics, just so you all know. Uh, that's what I've been doing for a while. So um, we actually, uh, as Fralia, we're a manufacturer's representative, for those of you that don't know the way that it works. Uh, we're actually direct sales representatives for our specific lines in a four-state territory. So that's Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Arkansas. And so we are a few different uh, markets that we have chosen to go after. Uh, I'll get to kind of the top ones, but since I'm, you know, we're obviously here for charity uh, switches, which is actually now become ZF, just FYI, ZF did own Cherry. Um, they had purchased Cherry before, and now they kind of cast the keyboards and the keyboard switch into its own company. So I now have two lines, you know, ZF and Cherry, which is the same products from before, sensor switches and such. But uh, if, uh, if anybody has any questions, obviously you're welcome to ask at any time. But to go over quickly what our markets cover, our markets actually down here, if you look at this, uh, MMF, POS, Cherry uh, computer input devices and cognitive TPG printers, which I'll pass some of the products around here. These are all retail point of sale. These are all uh, Dell HP types of products. Uh, we integrate with some of them. We private label for some of them. And so I figured there's enough technical people around here that might be interested in using keyboards that actually last and you spend less money over time, which is the way that all of our products are. Because the hardest thing for me to do really with going in is training people to understand, quit spending $5 on a dang switch that's gonna cost you 100 over your lifetime. You know, I've got a good one for you and it's done. So as you can pass around a lot of the stuff around here, and I'll just randomly pass it around, a lot of our stuff is meant to be in the field. It's ruggedized. This uh, printer that I'm passing around is a handheld printer from Cognitive TPG. It can find lots of different uses. Um, they're even implementing a thing called DocuShield, which is a specific printing of pantographs and other things for like military documentation. I heard some people in here are into software, Internet of Things as well. One of the production, if you look at that, labeling and things are extremely important in military controlled environments and government controlled environments special documentation and things like that so even though this doesn't seem like it may be something that would be related to our business it actually is you know so we are also a miller uh, representative and as you can see up here uh, itt canon industries right uh they've been around canon has been around for a very long time i think it was 1910 or 1915 something like that they invented the first coax connector uh, for, uh, I believe it was Hollywood, is where it started from. And from then on, they just moved to the point where they're part of the reason, in my opinion, them and a few other companies, why our airplanes were reliable during World War II. All the electrical interconnects and everything is what is going to make machines keep on going. Everything that we've been running into with IoT has all been sensors is obviously you know i'm sure everybody's already familiar with the can bus and stuff like that that's you know in, in vehicles and so on and so forth um a lot of that automation and control is requiring special wiring software feedback networks all kinds of different things that we haven't envisioned before because you've got some old machines that still work and now you want to figure out a way to fine tune them to be able to get information feedback and maybe even feed forward to get better production, better yields, whatever it may be, but that's that's at least where I see the market, you know, or where I see Internet of Things heading. Um, we've got uh, a bunch of other things to cover, so I'm just going to kind of move on because I don't want to you know, keep being stuck on just one thing here. But altogether, um, we've added some uh, airflow, temperature, and pressure sensors recently up here from uh, Sensata Technologies which also is a parent company of Crytom, and they do solid state relays. I'll have a few slides for you on those as to kind of, you know, give you an idea. Uh, Anderson Power uh, products, they're yeah. electrical interconnects that are, if you want something really robust, you're gonna throw it in the mud, it has to go like on an oil rig, it has to go on a train, you know, on a plane, that's ITT Canada. If you're gonna hook up, you know, a few power switches somewhere and you need a little bit of environmental protection but you don't wanna to spend too much money, that's Anderson Power. So, you know, you can kind of get an idea of the different connectors there. 
Uh, and then uh, Rosenberg offers fans. Method Electronics is actually a really good uh, dis power distribution network, so they really do bus bars and thermal solutions. So if anybody's designing with any of those, we can introduce you to all the design engineers to support you on some of your projects. So when you're out there designing a circuit and, you know, and you're needing some help, let us know. We might be able to actually make you shine, you know, sometimes. If, if, you, if you let us, sometimes it works. Um, Belden Wire and Cable, I'm sure everybody's heard of them. We've, we've, uh, we've been representing them as well as one of their, uh, Belden is a, a parent company of Lumber Automation. So this is another company that you need to be looking at for uh, Internet of Things and for modularization for uh, having different uh, nodes and networks and essentially having everything on one bus as opposed to you know multiple different uh, nodes everywhere. Um, so, Greyhill as well was one of the things I was passing around here that was a GE controller, that big blue box. That thing was made for moving trains around and Greyhill actually worked with GE on that 15 years ago or so and that product is still shipping. There's actually a clear version of it now that I saw when I went up to Chicago or to LaGrange actually. Um, and so moving into Greyhill, this is their, their LaGrange facility here. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker on this just because I know we're pressed for time here, so. But uh, I don't plan on PowerPointing anybody to death. The markets that we serve here are ag, automotive, avionics, you know, uh, military and uh, healthcare as well. So a lot of the stuff that you see that you're gonna be pushing buttons on a hospital bed that is going to be around for 10, 15 years, you don't put a, a lot of engineering into a product and then put a you know small panel that may fail on that product because that's why you know companies may go out of business that's why actually we've got a good sector you know about 18 percent of our business is in healthcare. Um, some of the different uh this is actually a really really great center if anybody is up in the chicago area in the grange i suggest you try to go out and check this place out it's got just a bunch of different generational designs that Greyhill has done over the years. Really, really interesting products. Um, I'm gonna pass out one of these kits over here. This is a little heavy, so I'm really sorry, but it's just great to take a look at it and just kind of get everything back in the way you can. It's, it's, a, it's a little tight in there. But all of these are some of the ruggedized keypads that we sell, different switches and, and uh, some of them you're going to be familiar with, especially if you've been in uh, military environments and stuff like that. You may recognize a lot of our rotary encoders and rotary switches. Um, so we actually do sell stuff that from Greyhill, you know, that's just off the shelf, and they also do designs. So that's kind of, and all of our companies are that way. You know, they'll work on both. So uh, here's some of the capabilities that they've got in terms of uh, being able to uh, bring uh, prototypes out to market. That's what I'm talking about in terms of their uh, capabilities for custom stuff. And uh, here's some of the environments that we go into, vehicle controllers. We've got a really, really great win with them. Uh, it was uh, John Deere, if you look at this picture up here, the off-highway one on the, uh, that right-hand cluster, that whole armrest and everything is all gray hill. So they made the entire thing. It weighs about 10 pounds. It's cast aluminum. It's just robust. And uh, very glad that uh, they got that win. So, And uh, some of the stuff is used in planes. It's used, like I said, in anything that's really uh, uh, critical. You know, you'll find some of this in vehicles as well for the infotainment center. Um, you'll probably recognize one of these products coming up right there. So. You know, they actually do the Legends custom and everything, and they can modify the controller, or they could just sell you that standard one off the shelf with your custom Legends. Um, they've also got this uh, 3K series keypad here is really, really neat. Um, we're using these in lots of different environments. I'm gonna pass some of these around as well. Um, we've got a 3K, we've got a uh, vehicle display, and these are not limited to vehicles. These are CAN bus controllers for anything you need. So you've got basically a few different modes on one switch, and it'll just uh, it'll just toggle through them as you're going through it. So you could have a fan speed one, two, and three, you know, hazard lights, whatever, whatever external, you know, uh, uh, thing you're trying to control on a CAN bus. This in particular, they also do a, what is it, J, 
uh, is it 1939, I believe? I keep forgetting on that one, but yeah, yeah, J1939. And uh, obviously Can as well. That's the really nice one. So we, we, uh, we, we've been putting those into a lot of places and that's kind of where we're heading. We want to standardize, you know, a lot of these different things that people control. And that's the whole point of Greyhound. They're very uh, human interface, you know, interactive type of company. And uh, that was a Canvas uh, keypad just for any type of feedback that you would want from your system. Something very quickly, you know, you can install and get something back for the, uh, as a human interface. Uh, again, some of the different places we go. Uh, I mean, snow cats, you know, that's some harsh environment right there. And uh, obviously, you know that the guys that use these things don't treat them nicely. They really, really beat them up. So, I mean, yeah, these things take all. We, we have a lot of design ends. As Fralia, we are actually a preferred supplier with uh, Ditchwich through Grail in uh, Oklahoma. So, uh, and more custom solutions. I'm going to flip through these because Grail can go on forever. Here's some of the uh, companies that Grail is selling to currently, some of the top companies that we've got. So, if you're interfacing with any of these and you want to look like you know what you're doing, that you know maybe maybe we can go in with some Grail stuff. Uh, lose out to you know some of the cheaper competitors sometimes, and then come back in and find out that you know we end up winning the design because of robustness that, that was required for the design that everybody overlooked based on the price. Uh, Cruze, I'm going to go over just a bit. This is some good automation in terms of if you want to uh, nano PLCs, you know, and you want to be able to get to them from uh, a phone, from text, from all kinds of things, and actually have some kind of I.O. Um, some of the places that are really interested in this are going into valve controls, into different types of solid state relay control or relay controls, different applications, you know, what you can imagine. But, uh, uh, some of the wastewater facilities are calling about this kind of stuff because they really want to know, you know, what can they program in there. All of this is fully programmable. These are the uh, EM4 series and nano PLCs from uh, Crusade. And so, uh, in terms of automation, this is a good way to get something small integrated into an existing system that you know you can get a little bit of control over for stuff that remotely you have to set something much more. Uh, You'd have to set something really big up, something custom, before this product came along. And uh, some of the other products that uh, Crusade has is uh, DIN rail mount uh, timers and uh, uh, panel mount uh, uh, plug-in and stuff for the uh, different timers and different types of uh, sockets or plug-in uh, configurations is what I should say. And uh, monitoring relays as well as counters. Uh, all of these things usually end up on panels that are designed for some kind of automation sequence or something that could be on a, uh, um, so for instance, you know, you might end up getting a relay that's saying, hey, I'm just monitoring this. If this goes bad or something occurs, I do this and so on. And that's all it's doing is just waiting out there for a trip point. And the counters obviously are just counting whatever you want them to count. You know, it's some signal or just saying, okay, this happened over here. So a lot of this stuff gets used in automation control. So Crydon and uh, Sensata Technologies, again, we've got uh, two different things. We've got pressure sensors and switches and stuff, and then we've got solid state relays. The solid state relays I kind of want to go over because I get called on this a lot. Uh, this is a real quick cheat sheet. You know, so you can kind of get an idea of what we cover and what we can do with solid state relays from Crydon. So this is really, really quick, you know, can you get there or not with us? Now this here is probably the number one, you know, in years of power electronics, this is the best slide I've ever seen for trying to tell someone, do you need solid state relays or don't you? Does your design really need them? And if you look over these things, I mean, there's really no reason why if you have one of these requirements, why you would go with an, electrical, uh, an electromechanical relay. It's uh, in terms of shock, vibration, you know, noise resistance, uh, noise immunity, lots of different things going on with the SSR versus an EMR. Now, granted, solid state relays are usually more expensive, and we know about that, so they're also more reliable. There's trade-offs. Any questions so far? 
And uh, this is kind of where you can look at uh, in terms of uh, what are we after? What markets is uh, Crytom after? This is really, you know, if it's in motion control, heating control, power control, or lighting control is really what you're going to be looking at. You're switching something on and off. Motor control, we actually have some motor controllers for even H-bridge type of arrays for forward and reverse. Uh, not necessarily something to drive a car with, you know, not that kind of oomph, but definitely you know, something very high current for driving some industrial motors, designs and stuff like that. You know, three-phase type of uh, drives. These are some of the uh, different, um, uh, these are air packs, uh, pressure sensors and switches, so uh, pressure transducers. Some of these are used in air conditioning. We're finding that they're getting used in lots of different places. Uh, there's, a, I mean, manufacturers that are doing, you know, like soda machines. I got a, something come in from pressure sensors and, okay, you know, I, I didn't really see the connection there, but I'm going to have to find out. And uh, these are some more of our pressure products. I'm going to give everybody, you know, there's a ton of slides here, so I'll go ahead and I'll make sure that this gets passed out. And it's not complete because I just kind of brushed up on whatever I thought was more applicable to everybody that's here. Uh, method electronics, this you're going to need no matter what you're doing. You're going to have some kind of power distribution network somewhere, be it wires, be it a rat's nest, be it whatever, you're getting power from point A to point B, circuit board, however it may be. What method does is method has clever ways of getting that power there at very low resistance, sometimes less expensive than wiring bundles. Um, they've got some really, really neat techniques in terms of uh, heat dissipation and uh, thermal solutions as well. Uh, so you can't really see the clarity of this, but all these products here, they're actually really, really neat the way that they, uh, if you were to see the way that they connect and the way that the wire actually gets fused into a lug, it's really, really neat. It's all just done with compression. It's like multiple wire strands are going into one of these lugs and those strands, they're not heated, they are just compressed and they form one solid conductor, the one slug. It's, it's kind of neat. They call, they call it cold fusion, but yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, that's what they call it. Uh, Anderson Power Products, so here you go. This is kind of more of a plastic type of connector where they don't really offer tough metal shells, you know, it's a uh, battery. These things are on a ton of forklifts. Um, you're seeing them come up on uh, many different types of, uh, like uh, radio control types of applications, uh, you know, uh, drones, things like that. A lot of these have become standardized. I don't know if you can see these here, but we have these in, you know, sizes like up to this big, you know, and then one that's even smaller than my pinky. So it just depends on the current and voltage requirements that you have for what connector you decide to go with. These are some of the newest products from Anderson uh, Power. Actually, I'm working on a pretty special one right now, which is this safety grid right here. I'm doing my best to get that connector specced in. And um, who here knows anything about what's going on in the, uh, the data center industry in terms of uh, 400 volt DC, 380 volt DC distribution systems? So yeah, so with the data center industry, we all know one of the challenges is like, okay, well, how are we going to distribute the power? How are we going to do it safely without anybody hurting themselves? So what Anderson Power has already done is we've already come up with this connector. They've already gotten it specced in at several places, and we're working on a few different uh, targets right now that we're hoping this becomes the next standard to push through. So if you guys can help me at all with that one, remember that safety grid. I'd, I'd really love all the help I can get because although there's not that many applications right now out there for uh, data center with 380 volt DC, we're getting some design ins right now from a local company that's going to go and uh, do some work in Japan and China. So uh, we're working on that. Uh, this is also a new product. Also the spec pack, what they've done is they've taken their older They've taken this design here, essentially this one, and they put it into that top one, along with kind of that situation where they even have a row of four and four conductors on the top and bottom for signals. So now you have power and signal into one connector. Uh, this is Smart Trend Manufacturing. And these guys have a ton of different capabilities in terms of being able to produce metals, plastics, uh, different 
parts. You know, if you just need something, a shelf or a product, and you don't have any way to get it to market, talk to them. They may be able to do it for you. It just depends. You know, obviously, you're going to have to look at it from a business case perspective, but they will definitely be looking to talk to people about how to get things out there. Gabriel? Yes. Go back one slide for just a second. Yes. Sure. You highlight it. Go back one. Uh, one more. That one. Yeah. That one you've been pointing out there over on the right hand side. Uh -huh. I, I've used that in robotics applications. It's a really nice connector that works well and is, uh, you can't plug things in backwards. It's, yes. It's, you know, so, and, and they're stackable yeah. and you can get them in different uh, sizes, like you mentioned, for different uh, current. They're like Legos. They're, they're basically like Legos. They're stackable and you can, you know, uh, when, when they're in this free form right here, they're stackable and everything. Uh, and you can, you know, uh, just, like, just like you're describing. And uh, the thing about them too is that when you connect them, there's definitely a tactile feel to it. Like a lot of what I'm passing around, if you play with some of these switches, you know when you're pressing it, there's no guesswork about you know, hey, is this cheap China thing working or not? I mean, that's the reality of it. Is this is crap working. I'm sorry, but anyway. Uh, it's, it's, sorry. But uh, I'm, 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 I'm more of an honest guy, and hey, that's the way it is. I've been buying tools for many, many years, and I, I try to buy stuff that's made here. Although even that has been getting a little cheap lately, but that's another story. So, uh, all right, well, uh, let's see. What, so, so, smart trend. They are actually into um, vehicles, into um, uh, engineering support, engineering design, and uh, powder coatings, metals. So if you need something stamped, and uh, for us it made a lot of sense to bring them on just because we've run into a lot of startups that don't have this kind of capability. They may have you know, three or four engineers, and they're like, hey, we need something, a prototype. We got a little bit of money, but we don't have that much. It's like, well, let, let us introduce you to someone who can get something you know, in front of someone for you. So that's the reason for Smart Trend. I'm not going to go through all these slides for ITT Canon. Um, I'm going to show you this. And if you want to pass it around, you're welcome to flip through it. Um, this thing here is, this is, like I said, probably one of the things that got us through some of our military prowess. It is these connectors being reliable that got us through some <laughs> conflict. Uh, on the book, if you look at it, it says we have over 20 billion different connectors to offer. That's why I'm not going to go through every slide over here because it's going to take too long. But uh, I'll just kind of flip through some of them so you can see some of the different connectors. Some of them are circular, high current, low current, metal. What type of uh, you know plating do you need? These go into space. These go into nuclear facilities. These go into power plants. These go everywhere. If uh, you've been in the military, you've touched these more than likely any time that you've ever uh, connected anything. So that's ITT Canon, and that's it for Fralia. And at this point, I'm going to move on to uh, the uh, thing that we really wanted to show you here, was we've got a demonstration for an energy harvesting switch. And if I can find one of them. Um, oh, you know what? One more thing. If you guys want to pass this around, everybody loves that new uh, RGB keyboard, right? This is what made it possible. This is a cherry RGB switch. If you look at the back side of it, you'll see that there's a small LED cutout. I believe it's for a, I believe it's 0603 size LED cavity. And uh, with that cavity, then there's a light pipe on top of it, and that's how the light gets dispersed. You put an RGB LED in there, and that's your Red MX uh, cherry key switch there. And now, this is no longer a cherry energy harvesting switch kit. It is a ZF. ZF, yeah, that's correct. So, let's say, uh, might as well go ahead and play the theme right there. We go. It is a ZF. So, what this is doing is inside this switch, there is a, it's, uh, you know, Cherry's been designing these. There's uh, the old molds on some of these that you're looking at have been retooled or are being in process of being retooled by ZF with ZF labels on them because the tools are worn. They're over 50 years old. So uh, all of this is going to be rebranded to ZF. But what it does is it's essentially a batteryless, wireless switch. 
that has millions of cycles, has a range of about 300 meters in open air. So it's pretty phenomenal in, um, in terms of what it can do. And remember, this is no battery. You know, it literally works off of the kinetic force of your finger depressing the switch, which then forces a coil to go through, you know, uh, uh, there, there's essentially a small uh, transformer in there and you know, you're looking at creative a, uh, creating an uh, electrical field. They flatten it out, it's a pulse, you know, and obviously they wave shape it and they get it out to about five volts and it's just a long enough duration where they send out an encrypted distinct on and off switch. I didn't wire up the software today, I didn't install it, but what the software would be showing you is that on, on press and on release, there are two different distinct keys going through there so it knows the difference. There's momentary uh, as well. In this case, this one's set up for momentary. That's why every time I press it, it like, turns on and off. And um, I don't know if we have time for the walkie-talkies, but you want to try that? I'll give you one of these switches. So uh, where's the other one there? Well, just grab the one I had. Find it later. Yeah, it's good to go. Yeah, let's see how far how far we get over here. Uh, okay, so that's a good question. Um, I'm trying to remember what the uh, what the different frequencies were, and I'll get that to you. There's a European. There's a uh, I think it was like was it like 800 was one of them, and I think 300 megahertz was another one. But uh, there's a European standard, which is actually the long range one, and then the U.S. one is a uh, it's a lower I believe it's a uh, it's the other way around. It's the US one is a higher frequency, which has a lower range. Yeah, you got 68 and 915 megahertz. 915? And, and I believe the one that we've got on this kit, yeah, I, I didn't check, so. The US one, I think, is 915, because that's the way it's service. Okay, 915? Yeah, and so the, the one that we spec off, though, you know, it is the European one. It's all, you know, in the. Yeah, yeah, longer range. Yeah. But it's a German company, so, you know, they, they want to inspect theirs in and say, we got on your range, you know. Yeah. Let's see where he's at. I see him. He's running. Careful out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's still toggling. It is still toggling. Where are you at now? The back of the bowling alley. Okay. <laughs> I think everybody sees you. I hope you guys don't feel too weird about passing all these things around, but as you can tell, there's a reason why I'm doing it. It's uh, This is all very um, haptic, is what we call it. It's still switching. Olive Garden, want to try Trudy's? <laughs> <laughs> Careful, those people are crazy out there. It just rain. Tell them to head towards downtown. <laughs> yeah, you know, line, so it's still switching. Nice. <laughs> I'm still getting it. That's an interesting experiment. Let's see uh, if he's talking. Are you toggling anymore? I think we're out of range. About 20 feet from Burnett. Oh, hey, it worked again. <laughs> yes, thanks for pointing that one out. Have him say, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> they want you to see the uh, Neil Armstrong quote when he uh, stepped off, uh, what was it, Eagle? I can't remember which one. That was good. So we see the receiver and transmitter coding together. I've had multiple ones that switches with any of them. There's different ways to configure it. It's a system. So we start with the generator. 
And when Cherry first developed this, they said, or, you know, well, ZF now, uh, they decided, hey, we're going to go ahead and uh, make the generator so that anybody can integrate it. We're going to train you how to do it. We've got the electronics as a demonstration, and you're welcome to have all the IP. Off you go. We're also not, we, we know that even though with the range and everything, we're not uh, radio experts. So, by the same token, we had to come up with a product that we could show everyone, but and demonstrate the capability of the energy harvesting technology. At the same time, we also had to balance that with being able to actually, you know, co-develop at a higher level. Uh, so, so some of our targets are obviously like a Levit is it Leviton or Levitron is one of them. I obviously not in my territory. I wish they were, but um, you know, they're doing uh, paddle switches already in the wall that are being developed with that switch. So. Uh, if you start looking at some of these different ways of living now, tiny homes, things like that, you may not have a lot of area for wiring where sometimes it may become more expensive. Handicap type of things and access where uh, you have some uh, you know, uh, uh, architectural limitations on what you can do and where you could place a hole for a wire. That switch may work out very well. Retrofits. So, yep, retrofits. And so there's just a lot, of, a lot of different applications for that switch. I mean, if you're at a factory and you need to send something, it's just a simple one and two, and you don't want to run a big old wire or any other communications network out there. You've got now a switch that you can mechanically rig up and toggle. And That's it. And he, he toggles. He's got, uh, he's got a 48-volt um, AC relay contact closure at 280 volt. AC contact relay closure, digital out. SPI out, and um, and then USB 2.0. So if it was actually plugged into his computer, we would see the yep. changing. We would actually also see the RSSI. Yes, you see the ID too. And the question that you had on the uh, on the IDs is that when we so each switch is unique, each one has its own ID. So when you do use one of our receivers, it'll do multiple. There was a limit on to how many of them. It was several hundred. I think it was it was one of those weird numbers like 255. But you know? <laughs> it was like, okay, why is there one digit lower than some multiple of some engineering number? But anyway, um, so what was, what was odd about it was that a, it was a, there's a limitation to it. But then obviously you can design another switch or they can help you design another switch that will receive more. It's just what we have for our own purposes for marketing. And this product, this product has been out for like about uh, three years now, at least since I joined Freyley and we, I got an early kit right after joining Freyley. And, uh, but it's uh, really, really neat, you know, just the whole way that everything, uh, it, <laughs> we always say it, it's like, you know, 50 years worth of switch making, you know, Cherry had to come up with something special, and this is it. And you can put multiple receivers on too, so they yeah. can work in tandem yeah, to correct. extend the range. Yes, you can also you can also extend the range by repeating you know, receivers uh, by repeating the signal. You can also have multiple receivers on activate to one switch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It just depends on what you want to do. But it's a network, so it's pretty configurable. But it all starts with the generator. Um, what sort of like uh, collision avoidance? You, you know, that, that's been asked, and I think it was something like, if you have, there's, um, where, where did I leave it? So, the, the technology is somewhat similar to what's in this, and this is one of our wireless uh, products, you know, from Cherry. And it was, obviously, you know, they were working on wireless when they were Cherry and ZF together, you know, so it was one think tank. And so, when the guys were developing these sets of wireless keyboards, right, they also ended up coming out with, uh, different kinds of uh, designs and everything. I'm trying to get to the root of your question though, because so like, the collisions, it's, it's like, I think it's, some, there was a crazy number out there on these because we were putting them into, um, I think it was 200 is what it was, uh, uh, like a facility that had a bunch of keyboards and they're wanting to go wireless and they didn't want to make sure they didn't have a, so it's almost like as if you have to hit the same to give you an idea of the switch, it's somewhere in the hundreds that they have to come in at the same time. And then all you're going to get is a blank. It's going it's to ignore it you know, until the next switch. So it's it's got its own, this network has its own design built in for that. But it just depends on what you want to do. But you said, uh, you said earlier it was encrypted. Does that mean that whatever signal it sends is different each time? 
the signal that it sends is the same for it from what I understand. These are actually, uh, one of these is encrypted, one of them is not. The one I just showed you is actually a lower end model, which is a wireless one. And then the uh, higher end model is an encrypted one. That's the one with a collision avoidance. That technology they end up using similar to what they're doing over here because they need the collision avoidance if they're going to be using multiple switches on one node. So that's how the system is designed. But then again, you know, once you get into a few hundred switches, you're probably going to need another, you know, uh, uh, transceiver. Well, in this case, it's just a receiver, but yeah. So, uh, yes? Do you have any energy harvesting solutions that are not necessarily rock switches? Uh, not at the moment. That's what we came up with because if you were to look at the, um, I didn't hand it out, but I've got the uh, generator over here, and if you see it, you can see the uh, size of the. Uh, he has electric on it. It's really, it's not a. Yeah, so, so this is the actual generator that is. Uh, that's developing that pulse inside that switch. So, sorry, I should have probably passed that around earlier. I didn't really. I figured that, you know, light bulb going on and off is going to be a lot more fun, right? Oh, yeah. Are we? Yeah, yeah, I know, right? It's like, it's, once you start, you, it's, you just can't stop. Yeah, what do you need just one? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's, it's funny that, you know, all that is occurring without. Any, I mean, the energy's there, but the fact that you're doing that without a battery, and it's just kind of cool. So I, I've obviously, you know, I, I play billiards sometimes, and I've had some of the guys, you know, that come up, and they're some of them are pretty sharp at billiards, but not necessarily an engineering crowd. And some of them are like, oh, we need to hook up, you know, 20 million of these things, like on some treadmill or something, and get everybody to like develop all this energy from it. And like, well, it's not really what it's intended to do, but okay, you know. So, but all it is is just a small coil, no real being engineers here. There's no real magic to it, but the fact that it was miniaturized and the fact that they're able to develop a product with it, patent it, is what made it so special. Any other questions? What's the water Uh, range. That's the antenna. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That is the antenna. Yes. What's the cost? On this one, I think the kit is somewhere like right under 300 bucks. It used to be 249 for a development kit, I think, and right now they're right around the same. You can get a switch and a module for right around like 120, 150 if you want to start playing with it. It depends on what distributor you go to. So, and for, for me, if you want to look at a rep, I'm a lot more of a wholesaler per se. So a lot of the times you're going to be working with my partners like DigiKey or Mauser or, you know, you might be ordering from Allied or Future, you know. And so if you have uh, any development needs though and you have some specific questions, they're more than likely going to come to us to get a lot of those higher technical questions answered because they handle 100 lines. We're only having to bring, you know, a few dozen. So, yes, sir. You said 300 development kit. How much for the unit? The, the, the unit is a lot cheaper. Yeah, I don't want to. The, the unit is a lot cheaper. I, I don't want to quote you on it, but the, the here's the thing. We're not a receiver company. We're a switch company. So we don't really, we're kind of agnostic to the receiver, and so we actually have a higher price on the, on the receiver just because it was something we had to put out for development so that development people can look at it and then design what they're going to do. So we're interested in selling the switch or the generator. It depends on your application and what your design entails. It's such a new technology that we're, we're, we're you know, we're obviously looking to support it in many different ways. but. It's development mostly is where it's going to come from. We've already had some integrations of it uh, in terms of, you know, kind of the, for instance, the handicap buttons and things like that are very, very, uh, uh, a very good application for something like this. It's just a natural, you know. Yes. Um, the generator? Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the, the generator you're passing around. That's for like if I want to make something that's powered by your switch. Correct. You, you would you would use you would use that and build your own radio, and we would give you the IP so that you 
you know, we'll give you the designs for the radio. We're not they're not proprietary or anything. Again, we're not interested in really selling the radio much. We're interested in selling the switch. What sort of voltage and how long does that? Like, if the, I push the button, how long does my code run? Uh, it's it's uh, it's a few hundred milliseconds from what I, re I remember. Um, it might be it might it might even go down into the like. I think it's low, like two milliseconds, if that. I mean, it's not long. And then on the voltage, if I remember right, it's just TTL, it's like five. So, yeah, I remember looking at a wave shape that I believe was five volts. But, but yeah, it's, yes, I think we were, go ahead. Yes. What is the estimated shelf life for average use? And how many I mean, operations are going to ready for? I, I can look that up. So, Cherry is mostly, most of these switches that have been passed around with that Cherry logo on them. I don't think there's one in there that is under 500,000 actuations at full current, at full voltage. Is that kind of close enough? Okay. <laughs> it's Most of them are a million, 10 million, 5 million kind of thing. They're meant to be used for a long time. Uh, this one specifically, the energy harvesting switch, I can get a number for you if you'd like. Yeah. It's a train controller, a remote control train controller. One million. One one million. one million, so it's one million is what's published on the energy harvesting switch. Well, and, the, and the other thing is that uh, any, uh, is there a hard version for EMP of these devices? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know uh, yeah. Who with regard to this charging at a certain uh, mm -hmm. voltage level, uh, voltage saturation? I don't know. You, you're, you're talking like seriously being able to have noise immunity from EMP or from... Uh, well, there are certain realistic distances that you can't have in order to be functional, but there's ones where you can say, well, it can be at the this point. Yeah. And there's a certain saturation level. Sure, sure. Yeah. On the, and, and, and you're saying between the, the noise level and where, where, where it would well, be in the about it where if the device would be still functional. Okay, okay. Oh, period. You mean whether yeah, it's, it's... Or it might even lose a lifetime, it might deteriorate. You know, I, th I think some of the guys over in uh, Wisconsin would probably like to get those questions from me. If you don't mind sending them my way, I can well, get them to the engineering. I'm asking kind of a uh, little bit on behalf of the state of Texas. Yeah, okay. In that one, they have uh, extreme interest. Okay. And knowing, getting more awareness in that area. Okay. Uh, so anytime the opportunity comes up, we ask the question. Well, we'd, we'd love to talk about it. Yeah, I'll give you a card and we can all... Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. All right, who's going to be, sorry to kind of go into, spill a little bit into the next one here, but I hope you all had a good time, first time out here. I'm going to grab a glass of wine and enjoy the rest of this presentation out here. So thanks you all for uh, having me, and any other questions you have, feel free to ask. I'll pass my card around as well so you'll have my contact info. All right, thank you.